Thank you, Wanda and John, this morning. John Price on trumpet. Good morning. morning. It's good to see you and to welcome you to the house of the Lord to worship today. And I pray that that's what you have the freedom and the joy to do today in your own heart. We welcome you, and I invite you to stand where you are and to greet the neighbors around you, passing the peace of Christ this morning. Our music today reflects our joy in the Lord for the freedoms that he gives us as we celebrate the 4th of July this week. The choir is going to lead us in our opening hymn this morning and uh, invite you to join us. And God bless America. can be seated. We want to invite Sandra Carmichael to come and share a mission moment with us this morning. Thank you, Sandra. Good morning, church family. My name is Sandra Carmichael, and I'm on our missions committee here at Spanish Fort United Methodist Church, and would like to share with you some information about Family Promise. Family Promise of Baldwin County is a shelter for families in transition providing them with various assistance with the ultimate goal of finding permanent and affordable housing. It's the only shelter in Baldwin County that accepts the entire family, mother, father, and children. Family Promise has a day center in Somerdale where unemployed family members and children that are yet in school spend the day. They receive counseling, life skills training, help in finding employment, permanent housing, and sometimes transportation. Family Promise depends heavily on the generosity of local host churches 
in providing temporary sleeping quarters and evening meals. After prayerful and thoughtful consideration, our missions team has agreed for our church to partner with Family Promise as a support church. We will work with Resurrection Church in Daphne. Resurrection is one of the local host churches. As a support church, we will volunteer one evening, once a quarter. We try to have enough volunteers that they are only asked to serve twice a year. Each volunteer has the option of three responsibilities. The first is the dinner provider. They prepare or purchase an evening meal for up to three families, and we usually use four to five volunteers for this. The next volunteer group would be the dinner host. These hosts would arrive at Resurrection at 5.30 to have an evening meal with the families. After dinner, they might play a game, have a craft for the children, or just socialize with these families. The third choice is the overnight host. These hosts spend time with the guests and are there in case of an emergency. They arrive at 8 p.m. and stay until 7 a.m. the following morning and have their own private sleeping quarters. I would like to tell you about a personal experience I've had with Family Promise. In, not, in 2020, I was made aware of a young lady who came to town with three children. She had an automobile and maybe $100 cash. She came to escape an abusive relationship. I took her to the privacy pantry where they gave her food and got her in touch with Family Promise. Family Promise immediately took her in and provided temporary housing and meals. They also provided counseling and helped her find employment, and after that, permanent housing. And I'm happy to report she is still employed, now working on finishing her college degree. The children are happily enrolled in school and doing extremely well. Family Promise changes lives every day. Please prayerfully consider this volunteer opportunity, and if you feel led to serve in this ministry, contact the church office and they will give you more detailed information. And in closing, I would like to thank our volunteers for committing your gifts and service so that Spanish Fort United Methodist Church can continue to help ease the burden of homelessness in our Baldwin County community. Thank you. I invite you to join me in our prayer this morning for our nation, coming from the scripture of John 8, 3. Join me. Lord Jesus, while you walked this earth, you proclaimed if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. Thank you for our freedoms, including those who often overlook or take for granted. For most among them, freedom from spiritual condemnation and punishment. Please let the freedom found in Christ be found not only to us, but to those who haven't yet experienced your great love and redemption. May your message of salvation be spread in our community, state, nation, and in the other nations from the ends of the earth to the other end. I invite you to stand once again as we sing together. America, my country, tis of thee. Stanzas, just one, three, and four.
The ushers are going to come in these moments, and we're combining our pastoral prayer with our offertory prayer today. And as they come, I just want to remind you of a couple of concerns. I know we all have needs here today, extended family as well. At Thomas Hospital, as Walter Fulton is there, and also at USA Med Center, Sam Campbell continues there. I want to remind you as well as the service for Mary Locke will be uh, next Sunday at 2 p.m. here in our sanctuary. Let us go to God in prayer in these moments and for the blessing of the offering as well. Good and gracious God, thank you that we have the freedom to come and to worship. Thank you, Lord, for all who have made the choice today, the free choice to come and to worship. We pray, Lord, that you would bless us in this time. Lord, that you would encourage our hearts, that you would inspire our faith, that you would increase our love. God, that you would move in our midst and help us to truly worship you today. Not only, God, with the songs and prayers and the proclaiming of the word, but also through the offerings and tithes and gifts that we bring. May you, Lord, truly bless those and even multiply them so that we can be your hands and feet as you've called us here through the church and our community, indeed, in our world. We thank you and praise you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who's taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
And let me invite you to remain standing as we turn to the Holy Word of God for the Scripture lesson today. This is in Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. Hear now the word of the Lord. Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemns sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And those who live according to the flesh have their mindset on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mindset on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's laws, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of His Spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. But... For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. We come to this holiday weekend toward July the 4th, celebrating our nation's birth and our independence and our freedom. And when you think about the value of freedom, it's quite remarkable And I hope we all are thinking about that, particularly in these days. What would you be willing to die for in your life? Your family? Yes. Your friends, perhaps, yes. Your your home, your property, possessions, maybe. There are precious few things in our life that we would be willing to fight or even die for. As we come to celebrate our freedom and our independence, we remember that our nation was born out of a quest for freedom. Not just independence, but freedom. And what does it mean to be free? I would imagine if I went through the sanctuary, through the balcony, and all the way through this church today, and asked you, what does it mean to be free? I would probably get a lot of different responses about what that means. If you look up freedom in the dictionary, which I did, freedom is defined by Merriam-Webster as the quality or state of being free, such as the absence of necessity, coercion, or constraint in choice or action. Liberation from slavery or from the power of another. And that definition is multifaceted, but it corresponds to this holiday and also our nation's independence particularly from England in its birth. But we recognize even in that definition, there's a lot of different aspects of freedom. But first and foremost, as we think about freedom, and particularly in this holiday, we're, cel- we're celebrating the course of this weekend and this week, freedom has a corporate and political aspect. Many of us are aware that our, in our American history, know our American history, the story of our nation's beginning as the 13 colonies of England, the intolerable acts of King George, the Boston Tea Party in revolt to the taxes, and the company of brave congressional leaders who put forward the Declaration of Independence. And they did that knowing when they signed their names there that that would be an act of treason. At the end of the preamble to the Declaration, 
to use their own words, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Some of the more famous sacrifices that we know of and of our nation's independence and the patriotic cry of those like Patrick Henry, give me liberty or give me death. Patrick Henry delivered that speech on the rights of the colonies before the Virginia Assembly in Richmond on March the 23rd, 1775. Another American patriot that is often celebrated is Nathan Hale, who said, I only regret that I have but one life to give for my country. He said that September 22nd, 1776, he was hanged for spying on the British troops. As we think about the quest for freedom from our nation, we recognize certainly this is not just true for America, but many other nations, many other countries in history have cried and fought for freedom. The Lord only knows how many wars, how many battles have been fought those perhaps not even recorded in the annals of history of people crying for freedom, making ultimate sacrifice in the name of freedom. Most of us probably are very familiar with the movie Braveheart. Mel Gibson plays the part of the historical figure William Wallace way back in 1300, fighting to gain their independence from the control of England also. Interesting. In one scene, as they were going out to battle against a very powerful, outnumbered force, he makes the rallying cry when they are cowering back and thinking they will not do this. He makes this rallying cry Ah, fight and you may die. Run and you'll live, at least for a while. And lying in your beds many years from now, would you be willing to trade all the days for this day for that one chance, just one chance to come back here and tell your enemies that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom. Later in the movie, Wallace is caught and is executed in one of the most brutal ways of execution drawn and quartered and in that movie still the cry out of William Wallace as he's being torn apart freedom quite a moving scene but from the ancient times the 1300s and prior down to modern day Ukraine the cry for freedom is there. Wherever there is coercion or oppression or tyranny, there will always be a cry for freedom. And why is that? And I think the rallying cries of freedom are instinctive within us. We're created as free moral agents in this world. God gave us freedom of choice even from the very beginning in Genesis. Of course, the only problem was they made the wrong choice. <laughs> but they were made to live as free people. This is not totally unrestricted freedom, but freedom to choose without coercion or oppression, as even the definition says. More about this later. But also in the second book of our Holy Bible contains the mighty events of God acting to deliver Israel from their Egyptian slavery and bondage. They were enslaved for over 400 years. Think about that for a moment. That's more than twice over our nation's been in existence. Hard to imagine. But the scripture says that their cries for deliverance reached heaven in Exodus 3 we read the Lord said I have seen the affliction the suffering the desolation of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry 
because of their taskmasters, their oppressors, for I know their pain and suffering, so I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians. In Exodus 3. And later, the more famous words of Moses, Exodus 5, 1, and afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, for they hold a fast, and they may hold a fast to me in the wilderness. Here again, in the second book of our Bible in Exodus, we see God performing miraculous signs and wonders to deliver his people. He is bringing them out of captivity, bringing them out of slavery. Quite an incredible story of miraculous events and signs and wonders that God performs. Even including the death of the firstborn of Egypt. Where the blood was not put over the doorposts of the homes. And even culminating in the parting of the Red Sea. <laughs> Quite an incredible story to bring about freedom for most of us today freedom is a gift freedom is a gift that's been handed to us it's been handed to us by those who've gone before us it's an inheritance that we possess but I hope we also remember that it came at great cost as has been said so well, and I don't know who originated the statement, but freedom isn't free. It may be free to us, but it came at great sacrifice to bring it to us. And I think that's been true in almost every story of quest for freedom. So we see that freedom is, in both the secular world and the sacred world, freedom is corporate and political in nature but there's another aspect to it and that's what Paul is talking about here in Romans 8 freedom also has a personal and spiritual aspect to it the Old Testament Isaiah the prophet spoke out and he talked about the coming of Jesus and the work and life of Jesus in that and here's what he says this is Isaiah 61 the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. And notice it says the Spirit is doing this work. The Spirit is leading me and enabling me to do this, to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim, proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. Again, the ministry of Jesus, as you look through the Gospels, is that he is releasing people. He's releasing people from their sin. He's releasing people from their infirmities, from their sicknesses. Those that were crippled could walk. Those that were leprous were cleansed. Those that were blind could see. He even raised the dead. He's setting the captives free in every dimension of what that means in the gospel. But we know first and foremost, even as we celebrate Holy Communion today, He came to save us. He came to deliver us from our sins and the prison house of our own choices. I will never forget the words of Nicky Gumbel who established the Alpha Series and also has prison ministry. And he stated an incredible word when he said, There are many in prison who live more freely than those outside. What, do you, what did he mean by that? And I think what he meant by that is that we are a prisoner to who or what we serve. And it raises the question of who are we serving? Bob Dylan sang a few years ago, you got to serve somebody. It might be the devil or it might be the Lord. But you got to serve somebody. How true that is. Paul is giving some important instructions here on how we can be set free. Live in the Spirit. It's what we've been talking about this whole summer. Live in the Spirit to overcome the downward and deadly desires of our flesh and our fallen nature. 
Notice what he says here in verse 4. Is those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. As we talked about earlier, all the way back to creation, Adam and Eve actually forfeited their freedom. We talked a lot in this series about the prodigal son. He had a false understanding of freedom. He wasted it because he was trying to live without any limits. It was freedom, as one group put a few years ago, that they are free to be as nasty as they want to be. Unrestrained freedom, we see a lot in our world. But that is using freedom for maliciousness. It poses a beautiful and pleasant experience, but it brings about death. It's like drinking sweet-tasting poison. As one author put it, it echoes the lines of Satan in the classic book by John Milton, Paradise Lost, where Satan says, I would rather rule in hell than serve in heaven. That is the essence of our fallenness. Many have mistaken freedom for rebellion, (laughs) and that creates the worst prison house imaginable. William Booth founder of the Salvation Army, he said, what the law tried to do by restraining power from without, the gospel by an inspiring power within. It is the Spirit that sets us free. In the last days of the Civil War, the Confederate capital of Richmond was overtaken by the Union Army. Abraham Lincoln insisted upon visiting Richmond in a very tumultuous, still tumultuous time when the city was very volatile. He wanted to go to the city. And no one knew he was coming, but everyone recognized him as he went riding into the city. And all of the slaves recognized him and thronged around him. He had liberated them. And now the army had set them free. But he told them, as they thronged around him, he says, my friends, you are free. Free as air. You can cast off the name of slave and trample upon it. Liberty is yours. But Lincoln also warned them not to abuse their freedom. He said, let the world see that you merit your freedom. Do not... Let your joy carry you into excesses. Learn the laws and obey them. It's very much like this passage. Jesus gives us freedom. He has has liberated us by his death. But that is only so that we can follow him. And trust and obedience. Jesus was sacrificed to set us captives free. We celebrate that today and we're reminded of his sacrifice that brought about our freedom. He freed us, as we will say in our ritual today, he freed us from captivity to sin and death. And he freed us for joyful obedience. We say those words and we'll draw attention to them in the ritual today. So we are no longer to live to ourselves. And that is the worst prison. We are no longer to live to ourselves, but to live for him who died to set us free. And I hope we will celebrate our freedom and remember the cost and dedicate ourselves anew Serving the one who died to set us free. He set me free. He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus to see. For glory to God, He set me free. Are you free?
whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for choosing to be here today. Thank you for choosing to worship the Lord. Let us continue to worship the Lord as we prepare our hearts for Holy Communion. It should be on the screen for you. It's also on page 12 in the hymn book if you need that. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let's continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. So with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Hear what it says. Delivered us from slavery to sin and death. And made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit. 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 Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquets through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit 
and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is the body of Christ. It was broken for you. This is the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, for the forgiveness of sin. I want to invite those who are going to assist with communion today to come in these moments. Remind you that this is an open table for all. And ushers will direct you to the middle aisles and will come and fill the altar rails and have dismissals after each setting. We invite you to come.
freely, Lord, you have given yourself to us. May we now freely give ourselves to you. And we, we arise as people who have been transformed. In Christ's name, amen. We thank you that you took our punishment. You took our debt. And in that, you have risen to give us life. May we arise and live by your spirit and know true freedom and life in Christ's name. Amen. Oh, the blood of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus that makes us white as snow. May we.
we arise as a people who are forgiven and cleansed through the blood of Christ. Arise and walk in his peace. Amen. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Lord, may we truly know and feel your forgiveness, your acquittal, your cleansing, and arise as people who are free from guilt and condemnation through Christ. And in Christ's name we pray.
confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we've made our confession. May we know the forgiveness and the cleansing of Christ as we arise and walk in his peace. his words you're forgiven you're cleansed you're made new in Christ through his spirit arise and walk in his peace amen response this morning is found at number 696 in your pew hymnal there, America the Beautiful. Will you stand with me as we sing?
Thank you for your singing today. John, for your playing and leading us, Wanda, leading us so very, very well. Our announcements this morning are very few, so we will remain standing. Remember the fifth Sunday of July, July 30th. Again, there will be one service, and I commend you for remembering this morning. You made it at 10 o'clock. I didn't see many people here too early. So the same thing, July 30th, one service, 10 a.m. Be sure and mark that on your calendar. Uh, the church offices will also be closed tomorrow and Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday of this week. Wednesday, we will be busy as anything. So other than that, watch your uh, newsletter and your bulletin. Take this with you and uh, mark your calendar as you need there. Will you join me in our benediction this morning? Go with the peace and the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to serve the Lord very well this week and to serve our neighbors, to rejoice in the freedom from sin and death that Jesus frees us to, and to live with the mind of Christ within us, as we heard this morning so well in Scripture. Happy Fourth of July. Amen.